So last episode, I got a notice from my boat insurer. An acceptable condition and valuation survey report is required prior to your next renewal. On December- which resulted in me paying 700 bucks to a marine surveyor whose very thorough report made it sound like my vessel's a piece of sh- I don't know, maybe it is. But irregardless, as my friend Bill would say, the insurance company then put my boat on lockdown as far as insurance is concerned. Your renewal policy has been issued on a port risk only restriction, which excludes any coverage for navigation or movement of the insured boat via any means while on the water without our prior written permission. And in order to lift that restriction, it looked like I was going to have to make 10000 actually $15,000 worth of repairs. Fortunately, Brad with Paradise Yachts, a rigger with 30-some years of experience, was able to opine that I didn't actually need to replace all of the standing rigging, which would have cost about ten grand by one estimate, that in fact any corrosion noticed on the shrouds and stays was actually superficial, and he was willing to write a letter to the insurance company to that effect, thereby saving me a boatload of hassle. And dollars. But I still needed to cross one important item off the list before I'd be free to move about. Well, in an insured manner, anyway. The thing I needed to do was to repair a bulkhead to which one of the starboard chain plates was attached inside the cabin. If you don't know what a chain plate is, I suggest you go back to episode 54, the previous one, which is the first of this series anyway. In fact, if you've never heard How Not to Sail before, you might even go back to episode 1. But who am I to tell you what to do? Anyway, the problem was nobody seemed interested in getting back to me about doing this bulkhead repair, let alone doing it in the marina, which would be my preference. Fortunately, I thought, Brad from Paradise Yachts came to the rescue again. I did talk to another company, and uh, they said they do do that kind of work. So they do work in the marina, or I would have to take it over near the harborage? No, they're mobile. They come to you. That sounded pretty good. So I gave the fellow a call, which you might have caught last episode if you're one of those people who listens for the little sound bite at the end. Oh, okay, your first name's Richard. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, my last name is Richard. Everybody calls me by my last name because they think my last name is easier. So Richard is not a company, but a single individual from St. Croix, who I can't tell you much else about because I haven't met him yet. But he seemed reasonable enough, so I had my friend Jim arrange to let him on the boat where he could make an estimate. So it looked like I'd be able to skip the $10,000 standing rigging replacement, since it wasn't needed, and it looked like I now had somebody who could do the remaining work in the marina, where the boat was fully insured. What could possibly go wrong? How Not to Sail This episode sponsored by our awesome Patreon patrons, like our new friend Neil. Actually, he's my old friend Neil. And by the album Birds Had Flown. Why? Because I produced it. Check it out at the HowNotToSail.com store. Hello? You got a sec? Yeah, go ahead. What's up? Uh, just trying to get some stuff with the boat, and I'm pulling I've out found here. out that when working on stuff on the boat, it's good to have someone you can count on for nautical advice. I had started to talk to what used to be SSMR rigging. Right, right. And uh, my buddy Jerry Hawk is exactly one of those kind of folks. I would just call any one of the boat yards down here, Empry or Progressive or Sailor's Wharf, and have them give you a price and see who, who can do it and at what speed. Yeah. A pilot and very experienced cruiser, Jerry was super patient with me on my engine cleaning fun a while back, and he seconded my idea about getting a letter to say that the standing rigging is okay which it is. Yeah, well, I would have Brad look at it and see if he can't give you a letter and get that taken off your insurance. Right. But perhaps most important to this little narrative is that he didn't think much of the idea of having the chain plate and bulkhead repaired in the marina. You'll have to get a rider from your insurance that you're going to move the boat Uh to fix the chain plates. Because, I mean, obviously, you're not going to be able to fix the chain plates in the marina. Right. 
Of course, anyone who's ever worked with me knows that although I'm pretty polite, I can also be pretty hard-headed. And I figured I'd found a way to get the bulkhead repaired and the chain plate reattached properly while the boat was in the marina. I just hope Jerry doesn't have an opportunity later to say, I told you so. So while we're waiting to see if Jerry gets to say, I told you so, this is a great time to thank our awesome Patreon patrons, including our newest patron, Neil. And to remind you that you can help keep How Not to Sail afloat by joining the Patreon crew for as little as $3 a month. You can go to hownottosail.com slash Patreon, and in fact, you can find everything How Not to Sail at hownottosail.com. If you've enjoyed How Not to Sail and want to help out the podcast but don't want to get on the Patreon crew, there's a lot of ways you can do it for free, like telling a friend or leaving a nice five-star review on Apple Podcasts. And if you want some more ideas, just go to hownottosail.com slash help. You can find over 200 articles, blog posts, videos, and all kind of mayhem at hownottosail.com. And if you're not seeing the site navigation menu on your mobile device, just click what the kids call the little hamburger icon in the upper left corner. You can find show notes for every episode of the podcast by going to hownottosale.com slash that episode number, so slash 55 for this episode. The show notes often include stuff like maps and pictures and all kind of stuff. So if you haven't checked out hownottosale.com yet, Check it out. You can find all sorts of useless, I mean, great stuff there. That's what I do. Right. I, I have insurance. Gotcha. And uh, what, what you'll have to do is send me the slip number, the boat name, Marina, so I can go down there tomorrow morning and take a look at it, and I will tell you. Okay. So notwithstanding Jerry's advice to take the boat around to a boat yard... I went ahead and had Richard prepare me an estimate for fixing it in the marina. The estimate I got back was simply a text with the total price of $3,590 and a brief description of what needed doing. Disconnect the chain plate, prep and grind the area on the bulkhead, relaminate including the bulkhead and reconnect the chain plate. Now, I'm not above doing my own work on the boat, but there's a couple of problems including that I live eight hours away, at least for now, and besides the fact that making sure the bulkhead that supports the chain plate that helps hold up the 50-foot, 400-pound mast is kind of important to get right, there's also a lot of nasty solvents involved in structural fiberglass work, and you can get fiberglass dust all over the cabin if you're not careful. So, I bit the bullet and sent Richard just shy of $1,000 to cover materials and get started on what I hoped would be a smooth and successful repair job. Now, I know a lot of old-school sailors avoid leaving port on a Friday, considering it to be bad luck. But hopefully starting a repair job on a Friday wouldn't be a big deal. Everything seemed to be going pretty well. My friends in the marina duly informed me that work was being done aboard my boat, so I didn't exactly micromanage it. Then, the following Thursday, I got a text from Richard. He was done with the work and was ready for me to pay the balance. Oh yeah. And there was an extra $550 due for labor and materials. Now, I gather this sort of thing happens sometimes, especially with marine work. But I generally like to know as soon as possible if there's a potential diversion from the estimate. Anyway, before I sent more hard-earned dollars away, I asked my friend Jim to have a little look-see. Yes, I mean, he left a lot of stuff sitting in thinner he left some garbage and stuck to the carpet underneath the uh settee um so i, I mean it you know vacuum means one thing but it was a lot more than vacuuming but what about the repair job i asked jim but the, the job looked good that's probably the more important thing and you don't want to pay him by the hour to clean up so so with that i asked richard if he were planning to finish cleaning up he said he was 
and started figuring out how to get over three grand to him. You see, I'm a fellow who, for privacy reasons, likes cash best. But it's kind of hard to get cash instantly from here to Florida. And of course, due to daily limits, I couldn't just send $3,000 on the old cash transfer app. And that is how I found myself spending two hours screwing around with sending a Western Union transfer. But at least my bulkhead repair was finally complete. All I needed was the invoice from Richard so I could get all insured again. Hey man, you said you were going to get me that invoice Friday. I need it for the insurance. And there's the rub. I got a little thumb-typed receipt via text as soon as I paid Richard on the 1st of February, but that didn't seem quite as formal as I figured the insurance company would want. So I followed up with a text on the 2nd, saying that I needed Richard to email something uh, more official-looking. Then I texted him a reminder on the 5th, and finally on the 6th, I left him a voicemail. Richard here, leave me a message. Are you as nervous as I was? Hey, Brad, this is Richard. I'm sorry for not getting back with you. But it seems Richard did not run out on me. Rather, he's just not all that tech savvy. I am not so good on the computer, you know. I'm not so good on the computer thing. I went to Kinko's, and what they're saying is that they don't do that stuff anymore, you know. I have to admit, it did not occur to me that the creation of the invoice might be the hang-up. But I can see how that might happen. So what's the upshot of all this? I guess it's that when it comes to boat repairs, there's always more than one way to skin a cat, to use a nautical phrase. And sometimes when you try to save yourself some hassle, you end up creating more. Was that the case here? I don't really know yet. But I hope to know very soon, perhaps even in the next couple of weeks, when I may actually get to visit the boat. I want to thank Richard for being a good sport. Well, we'll see how much I thank him after I see what the boat looks like. But in answer to your question, yes, I do ask people before recording them. Big thanks, of course, to Jim and Jerry for trying to look after me. And thanks, of course, to the newest member of our Patreon crew, one of my oldest friends. Well, I mean, I don't mean he's old. I mean, we go way back. Anyway, that would be Neil. Speaking of thank yous, I gotta send a big thank you out to Jarrett for turning me on to the fact that our Apple podcast situation was a complete cluster f Apparently Apple is rather picky about the metadata you put in the little form when you're uploading your podcasts. And the short story is uh, Jarrett helped us find the problem and now I have fixed things, as far as you know. And if anybody missed any episodes, they should be there now. Shout out also to our friend Wallaby from Australia's Shipwreck Coast, who's listening at work and was up to episode 6 last I heard. Hope it didn't hurt you much. And thanks for the cool article link. It's getting close to time to upload this puppy, so I gotta run, but I did want to mention that the next episode should be out, God willing, on Friday, March 22nd, since we're doing two a month and we have five Fridays in March. If you've been enjoying How Not to Sail and would like to leave a nice five-star review on Apple Podcast, we could certainly use that right now and very much appreciate it. Finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a birthday shout-out to our friend, benefactor, and all-around bad influence, Bob Bitchin, who's turning 30 again. Meanwhile, make sure all your standing rigging stays upright, and I'll see you next time on How Not to Sail. Screwing up is part of cruising. Let me show you how. Dear Bradford, thank you for boating with Marine Insurance. We've received and reviewed the repair receipts and rigging inspection and have removed the port risk restriction effective February the 13th, 2024. You will now be covered for navigation.